Hey guys, welcome to another Guy of Gaming TV video. And another Star Citizen video, because you know I love this game. Uh, yes, as you see, I am in a deluxe hangar. Uh, no, I haven't upgraded my business one. Though looking at it, I'm actually tempted because I quite. The only thing I don't like about the deluxe hangar is the lighting. It's not bright enough. But the little ships are in separate little hangars there, and the big ones at the front. So I think it's quite cool. I like that. They just need to make it a bit bloody brighter. It's a deluxe hangar, but they can't afford light bulbs, from what I can see. Anyway, um, the reason everybody's got a deluxe hangar, everybody has one in a minute, whether you've got a basic hangar or not, is because when I'm recording this, uh, later on tonight, they're going to have the next great starship final. So they've actually given everybody uh, the two finalist ships, so you can walk around. You can't get inside them, but you can walk around them just to get a presence of the aircraft and stuff. Which would have been better in the business hangar, if you ask me, because it would have been a bit brighter. And you would have seen the uh, lighting effects a bit better, but... Yeah. Um, I'll show you the ships at the end of this video. Um, what I am here to talk about is the Freelancer. Um, either yesterday or today, they brought out the variants of the Freelancer. Um, now, I upgraded my bog-standard Freelancer for one of these variants A because it looks really cool and B because it's more in line of what I'm going to use it for um, you've seen my other ships in my other hangar you know I've got combat ones and cargo slash uh, defensive ones so I wanted something that's more um, an exploration ship really so I can wander around the verse and Et voilà, my new freelancer. Which is the Freelancer DUR. And I shall read what it says on the uh, spec list for it. The Freelancer DUA variant specializes in exploration. Sacrificing 25% cargo capacity uh, of the standard Freelancer for an enhanced jump drive. A more advanced scanner and an expanded fuel tank. Um, may seem like a bad call to some, but for those who value discovery or the profit, it will be their ship of choice. Now, you know, I have combat ships and defense ships, and uh, I'm going to have other ships obviously in the future, so I think this one will suit me down to the ground. It still has good weapon systems on it for defense. And I actually like the look of it. If we go around the front end here, you can see the uh, big bulbous nose end. The rivets and the steel to me looks like one of those old, um, uh, what do they call them, American caravan things. You know, the steel ones, it lo looks awesome. But uh, they've put a lot of detail into this. It looks really, really nice. You see the extra fuel tanks there bolted onto the wings. Um, vulnerable to get shot at, but yeah, I've got big cannons on my own, rear guns and the rockets on the side, so I'd say it'd be fine. I'll take a wee walk around it here uh, with my Xbox controller, and you can have a look. The tail end looks pretty cool. Or the engine, I should say, at the back. A bit wobbly because he's walking sideways. <laughs> There's a butt of it. Back round to the side. Looks a bit beaten and worn. Obviously it's not brand spanking new. But it looks... Oh, I really like the look of it. I'm assuming the bulges on the front are the advanced radar and stuff like that. And then you've got all the communications devices on top. Looks really, really cool. I, I like it a lot. So, um, it is a little bit longer. It's one of the longest freelancer variants. Um, the normal box standard one is 32 meters long. This one's 34. Um, there are two more variants, which is a Max and a Miss. 
the Max is more of a transport uh, one and the um, uh, freelancer variant with additional cargo capacity at the expense of weapons. Uh, the freelancer Max variant sacrifices weapons and increases cargo capacity making it ideal for equipment of raw materials. So you lose weapons but you do get the longest beam which I'm assuming is the um, chassis. I can't think of the word I'm looking for now. Fuselage of the aircraft or spaceship which is 19 meters. Um, either that or it is the loading thing, I don't know. Uh, the heights are all the same. The weights go up quite considerably. Uh, from the bulk standard uh, null cargo mass from 26,000 kilos, uh, my DU order is 28,000. The max is 32,000. And you have the miss, which is basically a friggin' rocket launcher with wings. Uh, that's 30,000. Um, so the you go from the bog standard freelancer to an exploration one, transport one, and then a militia one. So the freelancer MIS is a limited edition militarized variant of the classic merchantile ship development by the UEE. Uh, these were produced in very small quantities due to some of early payload, incident, payload incidents, which means somebody dropped a rocket and it blew the balls out of the ship, is what that meant. Uh, this version sacrifices the majority of cargo capacity to make way for missiles. Now the missiles are actually put into the top section of the ship, so most of the cargo is probably storage and loading all these missiles. Um, that is the same length as my DU one. Um, so it's, it's packing a punch. Now the bog standard freelancer has 168 freight units. Um, cargo capacity in tons it says there. My DUR is a little less at 148. The max which is the transporter is actually quite a lot at 280. And the uh, rocket launcher with wings at the miss or MAS is 132 so it does drop a fair bit. And uh, funny enough the MIS is a three person uh, ship whereas the rest are a two person. For controls and whatnot, even though the uh, you know there's more seats and whatnot inside, so uh, the maximum power plant size for most of these is five, or the freelancer max, which is apparently six. Um, most of the other stats are the same. The freelancer max actually can have four TR5 engines. Um, I'll try and get these up on the, the screen while I'm going through these. Uh, I'll chuck them up there somewhere for the different variants. So you got pictures of them. Um, so the manoeuvring thrusters are all the same. The maximum shields are five on all of them except the max, which is the transport one. Which is a bit of a bummer. Um, the hard points are more or less the same uh, on all of them, bar the transporter, because obviously you're losing a lot of um, capacity on the, you know, weapons-wise for your cargo. So what happens there is you're basically just saying, right, I don't want all the the cargo for this because. I don't want all the weapons, sorry, because I want the cargo space, so you do sacrifice um, a fair bit, which is, I suppose if you're one of your, a transporting guy, isn't too bad, um, just make sure you've got friends if you're going to be transporting stuff in, uh, how can I put it, less than desirable areas, I suppose. So, if I take a look down at the hard points we'll see let me look here I'm getting on my tablet because I can't move my other screen 
So the DUR has 2x and 3x of the class 3 um, executioner. It has uh, 2x, 3x, S3 available on the max. And the miss, which as you assume being the, the technical gunship has it, has tons more weaponry. So the, the MIS is your um, sort of battle cruiser, are they? The smaller battleship sort of things. Which is pretty cool. Uh, the DUR, the Max, and the Miss all have Class 4 uh, turrets or weapon systems. And uh, the DUR and the Max also have Class 5, which the MIS doesn't. Um, the DUR and the Max still has the rear turret on, which isn't too bad. Uh, now, additional equipment mine has the most. Uh, I've got the uh, Tersus Leaper Pro, uh, long range scanner, and the expanded fuel tanks. Uh, the Max will have the uh, Tourist Leap Jumper engine, which must be the next step down from mine. And uh, the the MAS also has the uh, Leaper Jump engine. It also has the Express Missile Replenishing System, which probably goes in the cargo area, which is why it's a lot less. Um, so hopefully when editing I'm going to try and get the uh, pictures up on screen of these ships because they look pretty damn cool so let's go and have a nosy inside this and see if there's any difference or change inside now <laughs> there is one problem I've noticed the lights inside are very broke. I don't know if that's intentional or there's a button for lighting or whatnot, but um, nothing seems to be lit up correctly inside. I'm going to drop that down to a little bit of lighting, maybe. So I don't know why that has happened. Whether it's a bug or it's intentional. But you definitely can't see nothing in here. You can tell it has changed around a little bit. With the bunks and stuff, uh, the cockpit seems a lot more fleshed out inside. The other one did, and it still looks pretty cool. Let's see if we can get outside view mode on. I can, but it's not working properly. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, they've been messing with the uh, the view, so you can't do your, your spin around either at the minute. But as you can see, it looks really, really cool, and I like the, the metallic finish it's got. So, you can buy these, obviously, as uh, packages on their own, which are like uh, $140 upwards. Or you can buy them as an additional package. Now I don't know what that does because I don't really see much difference in it, which is weird. Um, so this uh, this is the lowest one you can get uh, for upgrades. It's 125 as an additional, or you can just upgrade uh, a freelancer that you have. As I had the box down a freelancer, I upgraded it and it was 15 dollars to upgrade to this. As you see, it looks really, really nice. Oh, too zoomed in there. Oh no, you can actually spin it around with this one. So there you go, the back turret is black as well, so there is stuff that they need to sort on these. Um, I don't know what the other variants are like, but 
you can see on this one that there is a little bit of texturing and lighting problems on it. But it looks gorgeous, I've got to say. I love the engines on the back, they look a bit uh, retro. I don't know why. They just uh, have a bit of a retro feel to them, which is pretty cool. And we'll do another, I'll tell you what, we'll do a spin the opposite direction. There we go. I think it does have that retro look with it all being uh, just brushed steel or aluminium or whatever they build them out of these days. But I really, really like the look of this ship. And they have brought the brochure out for it as well, so if you are like me and you're collecting the brochures, nip on over to the uh, Robert Space Industries website and the brochure is up there for you to download. Very, very good looking. I haven't actually read it yet because I've been at work all day. But um, I've had a quick flick through it and it looks very, very nice indeed. Uh, very well done. Hopefully there's a commercial for it soon. They have said there is one done or coming. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what the commercial is going to be for this because I've loved the other commercial so far. So I think this one's going to be just as cool. Uh, it just looks, looks gorgeous. Uh, I wish I could have a fleet of these. If I had the money I probably will have a fleet of these. See the extended fuel tanks on the top and bottom there. I don't know how much more fuel that gives you. Um, I haven't seen anywhere in here that gives you fuel capacity for the stats. But uh, I'm saying it'd add quite a lot. So guys, there is the new beautiful freelancers. Um, whenever they get the, uh, the interior lighting sorted out, then I'll give it another run. And I'll do another video for you so you can see if there's, what changes are on the interior. Um, just to see how much space that you do lose and stuff. I mean, it's not a lot of space that you lose, but, uh, you know, there is a little bit of lost. So, guys, there you have it. Oh, before I forget, um, another bit of information. Uh when these variants came up for sale obviously everybody must have gone nuts for them because uh, Star Citizen hit 45 million I nearly cut my head off because uh, of the lighting I can't find a hatch so I'll go this way uh, they've hit 45 million and already they're at 45.1 after that letter was out so that is quite uh, quite insane, to be honest. You see, the deluxe hangar, you've got your fighters in the back there and your big ones at the front. I actually quite like how that's laid out. Some of these aircraft I've had a little going over. I see the uh, my uh, the brain fart. My cutlass over there has had a redo again with the colour scheme and stuff. So, these are the Next Great Starship entrance. And this one looks really, really nice here. I've got to say, I do love the look of this parked in the, the hangar. Um, it looks beasty, it looks menacing. Looks like it can do the job that it's supposed to be for, which is a gunship. Um, you can't get inside these, unfortunately, in a minute, but uh, I do really, really like it. Love the. The gold cover on the engines gives it a bit of old school flair. I like how the uh, the landing gear looks uh, like you get today on the A380s and things like that, you know, the super jumbos. So, really, really impressed with these. The guys have got some serious talent to have made these. I uh, wish I had the time and effort to actually put into doing this stuff. I just tinker with 3D modeling and I don't have this sort of uh, effort to do it. That's really impressive. Then we'll nip on down here, as you can see. All my ships are everywhere. We have to figure out. I think the hangars over there are where. Uh, yeah, I think the ones over there are for my arena commander ships. And here's the. the other. As you see, the lighting's not that brilliant. You can't really see the effects and things in this hangar. They need to invest in some more light bulbs, I think. But this one. I love it and it looks gorgeous and the interior on this is amazing when you watch the videos. I love how you get into the gun, but it just doesn't, I don't know, it's weird. The landing gear looks too puny in this as well. But I love how you get into the, you're sitting there and that 
leads onto this, and it puts you inside the, uh, the big pod here for the guns, which is really really cool. I love the design of this uh, uh, the ship. The interior is amazing in it. They've really put some detail on it. Um, but seeing it in my hangar and up close, I think I prefer the front end of the ship over there with the arse end of this one and the interior of this one, if you know what I mean. But it's very, very nice. Amazing detail on these ships. And full credit to the guys who have built these. They're... Uh, Extremely talented uh, young people, gotta say, extremely talented. With too much time on the hands, if you ask me. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm gonna have a. I have Maya uh, downloaded, so I'm gonna have a play with it at some point and see what I can do. It'll just be rough basic models, but uh, yeah, there's the two ships in your hangar. So if you have uh, the hangar module, guys, get uh, the update download and have a look around these ships yourself before tonight's. Reveal, which is it's half past nine at night when I'm recording this, so it'll be in a couple of hours' time. At Eleven o'clock uh, GMT, I think it was. But uh, yeah, they are. That is the freelancer variants, and the next great starship entrance. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, please give me a thumbs up. And like this video, any comments, chuck them down below. If you haven't already, guys, please subscribe to the channel. The more videos of Star Citizen in the coming months, years, decades. Um, there shall also be other videos obviously going up there from different games that I'm playing. Uh, and uh, follow, you know the score by now, guys. Follow all the, the channels and pages that I've got, the Twitters, the Facebooks, all that lot for other information. Um, that would cool. Once again, guys, Freelancer Upgrades is the DUR for Exploration, the MAX for Transport, and the MIS for Militia, or as I like to call it now, the Rocket Launcher with the Wings. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. See you soon.